I'm Mark Unger, producer of Roundtable. Because we find this presentation so special, we really would like for you to see this. Please watch. Welcome to Manhattan Neighborhood Network's Roundtable Single Shot. Today we're going to be talking about uh, one area of photography which is revered and one that pops up in one's mind when you talk about professional photography, about fashion photography. And uh, to discuss it, we invited one of the greatest fashion photographers of New York City, Eddie Collins. Thank mm -hmm. you very much, Eddie, for joining us today. Nice to be here. Yeah, fashion photography, as I was mentioning, before we started the program, it's one of the few fields of photography I never touched myself. Mm. Uh, and it always was fascinating me from childhood. I knew that uh, there are those people who photograph models and living this uh, opulent style, mm -hmm. uh, lifestyle. And uh, it was always interesting uh, to discover that it actually involves more work and more uh, laborous days than actual fun that mm -hmm. everybody believes it is. So mm -hmm. let's talk about it. Let's see what it really takes to be a professional in uh, this field of photography. Mm -hmm. Certainly not as glamorous as it looks. It definitely takes a lot of work and I think, um, you know, a lot of dedication. It's, uh, I think uh, when you look at a picture, you look at it and say, well, I could shoot that. That's, that, that doesn't look difficult, even if it's a simple type picture. Maybe it's a um, just a jeans and t-shirt type of shot. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, no, I think that uh, once you get into it, once you start uh, finding out about the industry, you realize that there are a lot of different aspects to it. The job entails uh, a lot of experience, and uh, that experience happens over time. You have to be patient. So what do you think uh, is the most important thing the fashion photographer needs to understand through this experience? Well, I think the most important thing in being, I, I, s I would assume any type of photographer, but particularly fashion, is understanding uh, what your branding is, what you like, what you like to shoot. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's important to be consistent. Um, in our day and age, I think if a client's looking uh, for a particular style in which they want to shoot their campaign, they're going to look for a photographer that shoots consistently what their vision is, or at least close to, or that they can bring something to their vision. So they're going to not look for a photographer that has a wide range of types of different work. They're going to look uh -huh. for somebody who specializes in one thing th and does it extremely well. So you do believe that uh, it's impossible to be an omnivore, to just have all the styles and be able to work with uh, any type of client. You have to focus on a specific area uh -huh. and develop style. Yeah. I mean, point in case, when I first started, I mean, I'd assisted myself for a good six, seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. um, Bit of a blur, really. Uh, it went by very fast, but uh, at the end of it, you know, I had a portfolio that had a lot of different types of photography in it. Uh -huh. I think probably because all the different photographers that I'd worked with had rubbed off on me, and yeah. um, and so when I first started showing my portfolio to people, my 30 images, uh, people were saying, "What do you shoot?" And I was simply saying, "Well, fashion. Look, it's fashion." <laughs> and they were like, "But what do you shoot?" It took a while for me to understand what they were asking, and what they were asking is, "What type of, w what defines what you like? What defines uh, what you, how you want to be shooting?" And so, it took a, it was very uh, heart wrenching and difficult to wrap my mind about uh, what my, what, what I was about as a person. Uh, how I felt about things in life, uh, how I perceived things, how I wanted to perceive things, and then sort of transform that into uh, a branding, a, w a way of shooting. Uh, and if I look at my, my work, um, uh, uh, how it's evolved, uh, I would say that, uh, you know, it's a lot about energy. It's a lot about movement. It's a lot about realism. Uh, it's not so much about sexy and things. It's more about moments. Uh, and that's what I'm always going after when I'm shooting photography. It's, it's got a, pure, a purity to it, you know. So more emotional than actually sexy. Interesting. Well, that's right. Well, you mentioned something interesting. You said Which I find sexy, by the way. <laughs> well, emotions it, it mm. required for that, yeah, yeah, that's for sure. 
But uh, you mentioned something interesting. You said that uh, fashion photography is about realism. And uh, my understanding always was that it's one of the least realistic uh, areas of photography because nobody expects a fashion photographer to show reality. Mm -hmm. you, in the end of the day, uh, again, it's my und uh, understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, you painting fairy tale with your camera. You're making an image of something that another person who is looking at this photograph would want to be mm -hmm, one mm -hmm, other way. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. how the realism comes into play in this? Well, it's realism for me, not for everybody. I mean, if you look at a lot of photography, it's just a, a girl looking absolutely stunning uh, with some beautiful clothing on, uh, mm -hmm. or uh, maybe not so much clothing. But uh, but for me, you know, I'm really into, uh, you know, I, I would find amazing, you know, a, a girl smoking a cigarette or being on a skateboard or, mm -hmm. you know, sort of just, just hanging out and being herself as she would be with her friends. And that part is the realism part. But to, to, to be able to do that, it's very difficult. Uh, to create realism is actually uh, extremely hard. Which that's why still looks of, like a fairy tale. And that's why a lot of photographers don't shoot that style. Uh, you know, that's mostly. actually very interesting yeah, and yeah. Uh, one of the main uh, parts of what we're trying to examine on this show is always uh, the role of realism in photography and in art photography its role becoming to be shaky and shaky but uh, actually now you're saying it I indeed started to notice that in fashion photography this becomes to be the most interesting part of the results of it mm -hmm. something that actually does have the touch of reality, something that gives you a hint that this is a real person, not some kind of goddess you would want to become. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you think about it, it actually is trend not only with fashion photography, but with fashion in general, to for people to feel more comfortable in their skin and to provide them with a look that will actually be comfortable, more comfortable than glamorous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably the most unglamorous person you know. I think that's, that's uh, well, within photography at least. I mean, I work with a lot of photographers and there was a seriousness about them. There was an artisticness about their look, whatever. And for me, uh, because I'm going for this realism, this laughter, this energy, this movement, if a girl falls over on the, uh, in the grass, that, uh, that's great for me, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, if she's just hanging out drinking a soda or something, that's great for me. Uh, I, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's different than what other people are going for, certainly, yeah. Well, that's actually super interesting. And uh, you mentioned that uh, when we were, you were talking about finding your style, that your style will, in the end of the day, define uh, what clients you will be working with, mm -hmm. if I understood that's you correct. correctly. Absolutely. So uh, let's talk about this. There is a very interesting part of uh, working in any form of commercial photography, and specifically in fashion photography, is a role of uh, a person who gives you the assignment. Because uh, in art photography, which is my field, uh, you in a way have a person who gives you an assignment. It's the person who will be viewing your work and eventually buying your work. Mm. But you never know what are their requirements. You're always guessing. With uh, fashion photography, whenever you have an assignment, it's very specifically defined. So is uh, there is such thing as uh, resistance of a photographer when you're working with a client. I mean, you're choosing clients according to what you like to do, but uh, there are always would be differences in vision, how you approach that. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. And some, some photographers, I've heard some nightmares where uh, uh, clients have had problems with photographers that are very stuck on what they want to do to the point that they've actually insulted a lot of people. And for me, uh, I think that um, uh, things have changed. I think people are, are not only just looking for somebody who can shoot what they want, but it's going to be a pleasant experience. They're not going to have that that fight with that person. Um, that you're going to be able to achieve their vision uh, and have your flavor in there. And to do that, you have to be able to manage people well. So basically, flexibility and uh, you know, more basically trying to accommodate what clients' vision as much as it's possible That's within right. your vision. Oh. That's right, and also to like. It's not. It, it is. It is both of our visions together combining, and and I mm -hmm. think so. There's a lot of chemistry involved, uh, and it's not just with just the one person, client, and the photographer. You're going to have to have the right team. You know, you're going to need the right stylist that understands this vision, the right makeup artist, the right s the hairstylist has to be has to understand the vision as well. You, not every hairstylist is going to be right for that particular job. 
Um, and then, of course, the model it has to be the model that also is going to be able to move and 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 do things that the that the uh, that the um, client is going to want them to do. You know, if it's just sitting there looking great, then that's fine. But if it's if it's moving and jumping in personality, uh, that's a little bit tougher to find. Well, indeed, the personalities are rare in general. Uh -huh. Well, uh, in uh, what I was uh, mentioning before, uh, there was the question of uh, model uh, being uh, having. Well, we just spoke about models' personalities. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as I understand, you have your very specific preference to what models do, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What kind of model you would be working with? Yeah, for me, I mean, it's. Uh, I really like the girl next door kind of model. You know, uh, I don't like a model that's too. Uh, let's just say exotic. Um, I, I prefer, you know, really the girl next door that's uh, still quite beautiful and is still growing. I mean, I really, I really do enjoy shooting youth. I mean, I think, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21 is great. It's so young, it's so fresh, it's so, it's such a beginning of life. I enjoy that, I enjoy oh. that in a moment. We'll okay. continue this uh, thought after we will uh, get out of our quick break. Great. Hi, Alex AJ again from Single Shot with uh, another one, another single trick. Today I want to tell you about uh, using internal flash of the camera. Um, even some very professional cameras have that, but uh, if you would ask a professional uh, photographer, including myself, he would be told not to use it, especially on close-ups and especially when you're photographing people. Reason being, uh, when you do it, the face being overblown. You get in practically a white face instead of uh, having nice skin tones and nice lighting. Is there anything you can do about it? Actually, yes, there is. You can just put in front of your flash a simple dollar bill and take a picture. What, will, uh, what it will give you? Uh, dollar bill is made of material thick enough to control enough light and on top of it, it will give you some nice yellow tone to complement the skin tones of the person. This is a uh, single trick by single shot. Watch us on YouTube. back uh, so uh, we was talking about uh, models and uh, them having energy and uh, energy is, seems to be an underlining uh, idea of you as a photographer mm -hmm. and before I was mentioning uh, the uh, clients actually looking for a specific type of vibe and energy mm -hmm. with uh, photographer mm -hmm. and uh, they became to be pickier mm -hmm. than they used to be mm -hmm. so what do you think is uh, the reason why it happened I mean, Good well, I just think there's just a lot more selection. You know, when you have more choices, you get pickier. The right? competition is, uh, yeah, well, actually, that's probably because of the transition our world right. had from film to digital, and right. now the most professional photographers, one after another, switch into that. As I understand, he was working with film uh, in the beginning of your mm -hmm. career mm -hmm. and switched to digital mm -hmm. pretty early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I used to love working with film. There's nothing like rolling that film in a in the back and putting it on the back of the camera and uh, then taking it to the lab and then going through contact sheets. It was wonderful and I wish it was still there today, you know, but uh, I think with digital it just allows you to, um, or certainly gives you uh, the ability to shoot more. Um, the pleasure of being able to see an image quicker, I mean we used to shoot Polaroids, wait two minutes, take a look at the picture to see if what's wi what it, whether it was what we were going for and then you just go ahead and shoot, you know, five, ten, and rolls of film. You know, now you get that instant satisfaction. It can be shot directly into a computer and, uh, and you can shoot an abundant amount 
uh, costing the same amount to the client. So, uh, but at first it was difficult for everybody. I mean, people uh, were very reluctant to use digital. Uh, I remember my early clients, they, uh, we used to have, uh, you know, I think they used to question, should we use this guy <laughs> or should we use somebody who shoots film instead? Because they didn't, they didn't know how, well, how do you, how do you edit it? You know, and uh, I was very much about saying, no, I think, I think we need to shoot digital. I think this is the way to go for you guys, especially if you're budgeting. Uh, and um, the downside of it was that uh, it opened the door to making it much easier to become a fashion photographer, less expensive to become a fashion photographer. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, becoming photographer in general became easier and unfortunately it didn't uh, raise the amount of quality photography, just increase the amount of photography. That's absolutely right. Mm. But uh, as I understand, it was starting uh, when uh, digital photography wasn't in its baby stage, but uh, was in pretty early stage and it went a long way since then. Uh, what was the obstacles of uh, switching to that? Uh, was there any technical problems that you had to overcome? Well, I think it's a you gotta you you know you're gonna have to learn software and you're just kind of thinking about things differently. Um, uh, you know, the more affordable cameras were the Nikon's and the Canons. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you really wanted expensive, you'd go with uh, some sort of like uh, Aptus back. You know, uh, they were yeah. pretty expensive, up to fifty thousand. You get uh, they still you know. pretty pricey today. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, I think though that there's a lot of cameras out there now that uh, are, are a lot more affordable. Uh, a lot easier, yeah, a lot easier to do. The thing I didn't like, I mean, I used to really love shooting medium format. Mm -hmm. um, it's nothing greater than just this big camera, the Mamiya the RZ, right? Mm -hmm. Just a fantastic camera to have that waist level finder on and be shooting down on it. It was just, you know, you felt like you were creating something great. And, and I think digital's taken a lot, a lot of that mystique away from photography, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, you know, to be able to shoot on something like that is certainly a lot more expensive. And I still do, but. Uh, a lot of the time, it's just quicker to have that ha handheld, 35 millimeter size type camera, you know, like the Canon or the Nikon. Oh, that actually was another interesting switch, which happened at the same time in fashion photography. 35 mm. millimeter became acceptable for it. That's right. Before it was just medium mm -hmm. format, and that's it. Yeah, it was too small. I mean, before too, if you think about it, the transition with uh, with photography there, um, you know, I think that in film. Uh, grainy of film was more acceptable yeah. um, and you know that uh, retouching wasn't as prevalent right I mean that we would ha we would do airbrushing is what we, what would happen airbrushing but it oh. would be just minor things like pimples and things like that but uh, you know with the film being a little grainier for the most part that is I mean being very general here but um, it wasn't uh, you know it uh, it wasn't needing that retouching with the digital age came a new type of uh, photography uh, created and that was sharper images everything just looked sharper and more realistic and with that came being able to see the pores in your skin being able to see every single little flaw uh, it's interesting that Photoshop sort of was in there at the same time and so because of I guess Photoshop was its saving grace in a way um, that you could uh, you could spend a lot of time in an image making it perfect you know get rid of all those imperfections that was Kind of unexpected uh, answer because uh, my impression of early digital cameras was exactly that they have a lot of grain. Mm. But I guess he was working with uh, perfectly lit scenes instead of working with the natural light and that's, that's why right. for you it was less relevant. That's right too. Because yeah. uh, the further you go back with digital cameras, the worse they would be performing in low light conditions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. You would yeah. bump ISO to even like 600 and you would get just the grain. That used well, to be times right. like that. That's right. Even when uh, the actual studio lighting scenario would give you exactly those, see the pores in every facial hair you, you want to see there. Yeah, especially when you're shooting beauty. I mean, beauty before, if you look back in the 80s, you know, you look at beauty and it was very soft. It was, the lighting was definitely a lot hotter. Uh -huh. right? Um, and uh, and uh, with the digital age now, they just wanted to see all that skin, and you could make, I mean, beauty products just would shine a lot more. They'd be more uh, prevalent, right? But it'd take a lot of retouching to make it look perfect. <laughs> well, definitely. But yeah. uh, on the other hand, even lenses changed. If you think about yeah, it, that's it too, yeah. lenses from 80s and 70s, which are my personal favorites, yeah, especially yeah. German ones, right? 
they uh, on general was much softer. All details was there, but there wasn't so much in your face. Absolutely, that's and, true. And uh, probably that's the result of uh, manufacturers actually trying to create a lens that would be available for as many people as possible and do as many tasks as possible. Because mm -hmm. back uh, in the 70s, when they would create 50 millimeter or 80 millimeter, they would create it for the skin they would create it for photographing a human mm -hmm, being. Mm -hmm. uh, now if the 50 millimeter is created, it virtually created for everything. Yeah. yeah so that's, that's right. probably was one of the changes, but yeah. uh, we actually mentioned the abundance of people who actually can shoot and want to be a fashion photographer, but uh, probably now it's tougher than ever to actually become one. I'm sure it so is. So how is it uh, possible in 21st century, second decade already? Jesus. Look, you know, I have had a lot of interns in my day uh, and assistants that, you know, want to become fashion photographers. And mm -hmm. uh, I tell them all the same thing. You know, if you work uh, really hard, uh, you uh, take that uh, perspective that you want to become the best assistant possible. Not the best photographer at that point. The best assistant. Just learn the trade uh, uh, and, uh, and then go out. Um, then you probably have a lot more of a chance of doing well. I mean, through their assisting uh, uh, years, you'll probably develop some relationships, uh, and uh, those relationships will help you when you make that transition over to being a photographer. So basically, uh, leave the big goal somewhere far and uh, focus on the moment. Yeah, because I just not uh, you know it's not just sort of saying okay, I've got to go shoot a pretty girl. Uh, there are pretty girls everywhere. But if you want to compete on the uh, high-end stage, you really need to be shooting the better girls. Uh, you need to be able to have the relationships with the model agencies. Uh, you can't just walk in and say, hey, I want to shoot girls. I want to shoot your models. It just doesn't work that way. And uh, there's just too many people that are already doing it and too many people that are already uh, have been in the industry for a while. Uh, so uh, that have developed those relationships. And that's why I say it's good to kind of prove yourself as an assistant and go through that route. You know. Um, and as that happens, you will develop relationships with model agents. You will develop relationships with assistants as well that come up through their careers. Like you eventually, video. maybe we'll be becoming photographers just like you will. Photographers, stylists, hair and makeup artists, you name it. <laughs> well, this is great. So we will uh, continue on this conversation after this break. I will be talking about depth of field, so if you're familiar with the concept, you can move on uh, to the next episode. But uh, if you're not, I'm often asked uh, how the aperture works besides just controlling how much light gets into a camera and how light or dark your image is. And in simple words, the larger your opening of the aperture is, the smaller will be distance on which uh, your camera is focused. And if you would photograph something like this branch with the open aperture, you will get uh, the image that is focused only on the certain distance, something like this. But if you close it all the way down and take the same picture, you will get the uh, almost the whole plane, everything like this, to be uh, in focus. And in one case, you will get uh, more uh, focused attention of the viewer on a specific part of your photograph. have only a few minutes to talk and I wanted to touch one very interesting uh, question. A role of personality in fashion photography versus role of personality in art photography. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are some similarities in uh, studio shoots with artistic purposes in mind and uh, fashion shoots, same equipment, same mm -hmm. cameras, same type of studio setup in, mm -hmm. many, uh, in many situations, but there is one big difference, I believe. Uh, in uh, 
art photography essentially most of the time a uh, objective of photographing a person is a person mm -hmm. in fashion photography a person is an entourage to an object that being commissioned mm -hmm. so wow it's a big topic i mean uh when it comes to art photography i mean i'm i'm always blown away by what art photography brings uh to us and uh it's astonishing i mean there's times where I just can't wrap my head around how they've done it, uh, um, and uh, uh, there I guess there's a wide range of, uh, of, of photography, right, and all mm -hmm. sorts of aspects of whatever you've chosen, the field you've chosen, or type of field you've chosen, but uh, yeah, certainly with fashion, uh, it's, uh, you know, for fashion photography, it's a lot more of a collaboration from my experience, uh, a lot more people involved, a lot more opinions, um, a lot of the time it's working around those opinions and the egos sometimes. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, sometimes a little bit of babysitting, uh, you know, working mm -hmm. around those personalities and and uh, encouraging and <laughs> you know yeah. whatever it takes to be able to get that that uh, perfect shot, you know, for the client, mm -hmm. you know, so please the client. Talking about the uh, babysitting those personalities, yeah. as I understand, you probably experience sometimes situations when you would bring a model on, on a shot mm -hmm. with specific assignment in mind that you need to photograph, I don't know, this bag or that hat, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And the person would actually try to make a photograph about herself, not yeah. about the object. How yeah. you deal with something like this? Well, you know, that's interesting. I mean, for me, uh, you know, the great thing about my career is that I've kind of assisted a lot of, uh, a lot of years. And so I've seen all these different ways in which it's done. Um, and uh, most of the time I kind of find that uh, the photographers I've worked in the past, uh, you know, they may be a little cooler than me or they kind of got a different vibe or an archie vibe. And me, I'm just kind of just a regular guy. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, uh, I don't try to be anybody I'm not. I think that uh, I, I usually try to just win the model over is where I'm at with it, you know, just winning her over as a friend. And uh, uh, when you have that friendship, you know, they're willing to, uh, to, to work with you on any shot that you want. Oh, so if it would sum it up, Essentially, probably it's all about winning over, winning over the client, winning over the model, <laughs> and at the end of the day, winning over this That's person right. who holding this magazine and looking at it and saying, wow. I'm running to the store to buy that. I think you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the recipe. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you very much, Eddie. It was mm -hmm. a great show. I really thank you. was fascinated by the world of fashion photography I never experienced before. Mm -hmm. I hope you found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark Unger for Roundtable. Thanks for watching.